now we can talk a little bit about alaritumab. So, Mark, why don't you talk to us a little bit about alaritumab? Yes. So I, I think this is I, so exciting. We've just discussed three drugs new to market. We're now able to discuss another drug that hopefully will come to market shortly. And so this is a drug that several of us have had experience with, starting with the phase 1B through to the phase 2, and now there is a phase 3 that has just completed accrual. Um, so this is probably the first monoclonal antibody that's been used for um, sarcoma patients. It is binding or selectively binds for PDGFR alpha. Mm -hmm. And I think that the excitement at last year's ASCO was really over this overall survival advantage of 25 months versus 14.7 months for the group that got adriamycin as a single agent. And so the clinical trial was created for the 1B portion of the phase 1B. All patients received the adriamycin day one every 21 days, and olaratumab they got days one and day eight every 21 days. For the phase two portion, they were randomized. And so there was that ability to compare the two for a single agent versus combination. For those of us who used it um, quite a lot on our patients, it seems to be exceedingly well tolerated. Um, there are responses seen, and that one would anticipate we'd see responses because it was used with adriamycin, and adriamycin is an active drug, and so that doesn't come as a surprise. Um, what does this do for us? I think this as a community, it brings a discussion of how do you treat patients in first line. Um, I think it probably throws the door open and what do you do with AI versus A versus A plus olaratumab, but I don't know if we want to get into that discussion. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, that throws it wide open. Really, what do you do as a first line assuming this comes to market? Um, but I certainly think the ability to combine a chemotherapeutic with a monoclonal antibody, um, new to our field, exciting for our field, um, and one can't negate if the phase three mimics the phase two and you see this really impressive overall survival advantage. We didn't see this in other phase three trials when we looked at um, um, the Xiopharm um, palifosfamide trial that was a negative trial. We didn't see it with the threshold data. And so really we're seeing something that's probably about in the order of nine to 12 months longer than what we would have anticipated seeing. So I think certainly bring something to the table and really something exciting. Yeah, I think what's interesting too, and, and Trez may have touched on it a little bit, when you looked at the aribulin data, there was an overall survival benefit that was a little out of proportion to the, the progression-free survival benefit. And I think when we look at the alaritumab data, we do see two-month improvement in progression-free survival, but then you see this large overall survival. So one of the things, and George alluded to it with uh, Trebectin in his what is this teaching about the biology of our diseases, right? Is there something that's happening in the mesenchymal tumor environment? Is there something happening with PDGFR of alpha signaling? Is there something that's happening with aribulin and what it plays in this mesenchymal environment? We are forever looking at our diseases from the auspice of what people are doing in the epithelial malignancies. But I, I, I think there's a tremendous amount of learning that we have and then a contribution to other diseases once we begin to figure that out. Our, are any of these drugs being considered in the pediatric sarcomas? I know that olorectomab is being considered, is, um, they're working on a phase one yeah. quickly. I mean, the data is very exciting. Yeah. And so we would like to bring, uh, we'd like to bring that to kids as soon as possible. Yeah. And, and what are there, some of, I'm sorry. And you have finished the aribulin trial. COG yeah. did complete the aribulin trial. COG very studied aribulin yeah. in a specific, in osteosarcoma, uh, being able to use the adult data down to the age 12. Uh, they were able to uh, very quickly, in about three and a half months, uh, complete the first phase of a phase two. Unfortunately, it did not show activity for osteosarcoma, not a soft tissue sarcoma but it does still have a potential to be explored in soft tissue sarcomas. This also brings up the point that really drug development starts when a drug gets an FDA approval. Yeah. So the fact is we're still, I, I'm very nervous about saying that drugs don't work when they've been tested in certain subsets, yeah, exactly. especially of sarcomas, because they're so different. Just like you said, osteosarcoma is not, synovial sarcoma is not liposarcoma. So we have to be careful that we don't tar and feather a whole set of cancers. It's like saying a drug that works in breast cancer is definitely, you know, not going to work in pancreas cancer. Maybe it won't, but maybe I, it will. I agree. And some of the work just begins with the FDA approval. And right. the other thing which we have to, you know, really pay attention to is that we have to figure out how to bring these drugs into the pediatric populations in the appropriate setting early on, right? Mm -hmm. Because we shouldn't have these long periods of lag time, right? And I think these are all potential options. So, well, well the exciting thing about olaritumumab, right, is that that should combine beautifully with yeah, almost everything Almost we everything. Use. That's right. So if that phase three is positive, that's extraordinarily interesting, and it builds potentially off the fact of we don't know why pizopinib was positive. Maybe it's PDGF receptor alpha there too. It's, it hits that target as well. 
So we're, we're very much waiting for those data to show And if you're able and to I've, change the biology, sorry, if you're yes. able to change the biology and actually change the microenvironment, yes. what better population than the pediatric population? Because right. if you're really going to change and this becomes a chronic disease, I mean, if you could give longevity in that population, I mean, yeah. you've achieved something incredible.